What's up, YouTube? In this episode, I'm going to be talking about if you need to speak any Chinese or learn Chinese coming to China, and if you can survive only knowing English. So I'm going to go into two scenarios. The first scenario is going to be top tier cities, so like A-level cities like Guangzhou, Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, and all and all that jazz. And then for the second scenario, I'm going to be talking about the rural areas, more inland China. If you want to see the beautiful landscapes and mountain ranges or anything like that. So let's get started with the top tier cities. So I'm gonna go into the safe zones at first. Now these safe zones are areas where you can just freely speak English, and you can definitely expect somebody to return the conversation in English. It'd be pretty easy and convenient for you to use. Public transportation in the top tier cities usually have either a signs that are all translated into English, or b somebody that can help you speak. English with any kind of transaction you need. If you need to buy a ticket for the train, if you need to buy a ticket for the subway, etc. The only exception I would say is if you're taking a bus, do not expect any of the bus signs to be in English. They will all be in Chinese. And if you can figure it out with just numbers and copy and pasting the the characters, the Chinese characters to go where you're going, I'm sure you'll be fine. But I do not recommend you you take the bus. I actually did make a video about taking public transportation in China. Feel free to have a look at it up there. Just give it a click. Anyways, the next safe zone is four to five star hotels. Now, in the center of the city, if you're staying in a nice hotel, you can expect everyone there to speak English. They have a lot of foreigners coming in and out. The bellboys will speak English. The everybody there speaks English. Next, what I'm going to go into is international malls. What I mean by international malls is malls that sell international brands that are very well known and typically very luxurious, like Louis Vuitton, Cartier, Chanel. Another example of a safe zone are international brands and restaurants. What I mean is like fast food places that are known all throughout the world. I'll just give you one example here. If you go to McDonald's here, you can either a Order through a machine that has English translations available if you need it, or B, talk to the cashier and there's typically a sign with pictures and English translations. And you can just point at what you want, and they know enough English to say, "Do you want like two patties, one patty? Do you want cheese with that? Do you want extra ketchup?" The next safe zone are major tourist attractions. So I'm going to go through one example, but there's two big tourist attractions for foreigners in Guangzhou. One of them is being Beijing Road, where it's just like a beautiful road, has historical sites and a lot of shopping to do. And the second one is the Guangzhou Tower.、Um, I actually live close to the Guangzhou Tower, and all the signs are in English, or they're in Chinese but have English translations. So when you want to buy a ticket to go up to the tower, make sure you bring your passport, by the way. You typically can meet somebody there that can speak English, or the signs can direct you in the right direction, and they can refer you to somebody that speaks English. The last safe zone I'm going to talk about are Western cultural locations. What I mean by this is every large city in China typically has a road or like a corner that's really meant for the international community. Uh, I'm going to give you two examples in Guangzhou. The first one will be in our city center. There's a road in Zhujiang New Town that has full of Western restaurants, Western bars. You can have steak, you can have Mexican food, you can have Indian food, all of that. And typically, you know, you're in a Western location if you see more Westerners than Chinese there. You can even expect the waiters and the waitresses to be able to speak English. Some of them are actually not even Chinese, so it's actually really convenient. The second example is Party Pier in Guangzhou. This is typically a place for partying that has a lot of Western influence, and there's also Mexican food and diners and all that. You can tell if a lot of the waiters there are are not Chinese. You can tell that it's a Western-friendly area. They can all speak English there just fine, especially if their signs are all in English. Now, I just went through some safe areas in the top-tier cities. Now I'm going to go into some questionable areas. The first one is taking a taxi. So if you don't have any pictures of the map of where to go, or at least know the Chinese name or the Chinese characters, you're probably going to have trouble taking a taxi in China. Now, lucky for you, I have made a public transportation video that you can look at right here, where I go into detail on how to order public transportation, how to download the right apps, how to download the English version of apps, and how to take a taxi in China from start to finish. So those resources are out there. 
but if you're just gonna hail a taxi, don't expect them to speak any English. If you go to any local shops or local restaurants that typically don't have any English translations, just have pictures and Chinese characters, especially as you get further away from the city center, don't expect them to speak English. <laughs> you can try, I'm not saying don't do it, don't try, but maybe bring a translator with you or a friend who speaks Chinese. The last questionable area is tourist attractions that are not really well known internationally. An example in Guangzhou would be Old Guangzhou, which is an area of Guangzhou that has really traditional buildings, museums, but is not really known throughout the world. So a lot of the people there are local and a lot of mainland Chinese go there to, to look at the attractions, but not so many foreigners. So don't expect them to speak English. So what is the verdict for top tier cities? If you can just go speaking English, not learning any Chinese, I'm gonna go with yes. Now, to a certain extent, like I said those safe areas earlier, if you're in the city center, I think you'll be just fine. If you start exploring outside in the rural areas or maybe 30 minutes away from the city center, then you could be in a little bit of danger. I wouldn't say a little bit of danger, but you could need like a translator or some kind of a picture to show whoever you're talking to what you want. So the next area I'm gonna go into is the rural areas. Now these are not the top tier cities. This is if you wanna go hiking or in the, see the landscapes of China, especially inland China with the mountain ranges. And I'm gonna say up front, most of the places are questionable. Unless you're going to like the best hotel in this location, which is maybe like a five star hotel, the most expensive one, they can probably speak a little bit of English. But as far as public transportation, tourist attractions, especially restaurants, don't expect any of them to speak any English. And check it out. To add on to that, they may not even speak any Mandarin. So I went to my father-in-law's hometown, which is called Chaozhou. And in Chaozhou, they speak Chaozhou Hua, which is a local dialect. So when we got there, I took a taxi and I was speaking to the driver in Chinese, in Mandarin. And they were understanding what I was saying. Like they, I got to the place I needed to be at, but they were responding to me in their local dialect and I had no idea how to react to that. I'm like, if you can understand what I'm saying, can't you respond in Mandarin? But the taxi driver couldn't speak any Mandarin. He could just understand it, but he spoke the local dialect. So what is the verdict for local rural areas? I'm gonna go with no. Now don't worry, okay? Don't, don't feel like you can't come to China because you can't speak any Chinese, especially if you wanna explore outside the major cities. I'm actually gonna put a link in the description below on some tourist agencies that can provide you a guide that can speak the Loa dialect that you're going. They pretty much follow you all day from breakfast to dinner and maybe even some night attractions and they'll do the translations for you, help you buy stuff and the rates are actually pretty fair. I've used this service before and it's really handy if you're going into the outer parts of China. I also go into a lot more detail into the top 10 things you should do when you first come to China and you can see the video link up there and I'll post it, post it in the description below as well. So let me know what city you want to go to to China for the first time in the comments below. If you got value from this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Also, if you plan to live or work in China and you want to see any more tips and tricks about having a better lifestyle here or have any questions in general, please consider subscribing. And if you have any video ideas or any questions that I haven't answered, feel free to write them down in the comments below. Anyways, I'll see you next time.